Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to part two of this series where I show you my favorite scripts and extensions. If you didn't watch part one, go ahead and check that out. If you did, let's get right into it. Mobar is a really cool time saving tool and it's sort of similar to the extension called Mammograph, but personally, I think this one is better. One, because the other one does way too much and it's really confusing for me to find something specific among all of the unnecessary stuff there, which I don't use. And two, this is really minimal design as you can see. It doesn't take up too much screen real estate. So compared to both, I think this one gives me a much faster workflow. So anyway, back to the script. The first one here is the quick search where you can search up any feature on After Effects. You can call up scripts or you can call up any shortcut here on mobile. This one's my favorite because you only need to open up scripts when you need them. For example, text evo is something I use only occasionally so I can call it up right here and I don't have to go through a list to find the script that I need. For the ones that I do need, I have them docked right here and I can use the scroll wheel to cycle between them. I'll talk about these later in the video so back to the script. The second one here is for selection. You have a lot to choose from. You can select even layers, you can select parented layers. And the next one here is for layer management. You can change the order of layers. There are plenty of shortcuts. You have auto crop comp. You have organized comp where you can give custom folder names. Here you have the option to solo and solo specific layers. You have text animation tools and this text reveal animation is a really cool shortcut. Other animation tools like spin, bend, bounds, etc. So anyway, I'd highly recommend you go check out their page. They have a really cool representation of what these 120 tools are. So go check it out. Puppet Tools 3 is a really easy script to use to create a rig or a Nike chain. All I have to do is make pins on these joints and click on create controllers. The script will then convert these pins to nulls which you can use to animate or you can parent them based on layer structure and click on create IK. Whenever you're duplicating a pre-comp, you have to be very careful about what you change inside this pre-comp because these changes will also reflect on the duplicated pre-comp or the original pre-comp. So if you're looking to make unique changes inside this duplicated pre-comp, you know there's a process involved and you have to duplicate the layer source inside the project and then bring that pre-comp into the timeline. Also notice that the scaling and other attributes would be different unlike when you duplicate them. So this is where true layer duplicator comes in. I have this button on kbar to run the true layer duplicator script. Now what I can do is go inside this precomp and change anything that I want. Even if there are precomps inside this precomp, what true layer duplicator does is that it duplicates any precomps inside this precomp as well at the source level. So you don't have to worry about your changes affecting any other precomps or anything. Up next we have a layer management tool. Here, for example, we are working with a lot of layers and as you can see some of these are parented to either a null or some other layer based on how I want to control them. So having to go through all of these layers is a bit of a headache. So let's open up Squirrel and now you can see we have a toggle list for all the parented layers. So you basically get a holistic view of all the layers in your timeline. What you would otherwise nest in a pre-comp here, we have a toggle list. This is especially useful when you want to animate these individual shapes without having to pre-comp them because you want some sort of reference as to how it relates to other elements in this main comp. So if you use this extension, you sort of get the feeling that you have pre-comped them, but you still are able to uh, see them in the main comp. There are other useful stuff in here as well, like you can group and ungroup child layers. So yeah, I think this is sort of like a good wingman for for when you don't want to pre-comp something and you still want to be able to see them in the main comp. I think everybody knows this tool from Video Copilot, but you know, it had to be on the list because I use it all the time. If you press Ctrl plus space key on the keyboard, it opens up FX console and you can 
basically search up any effects or presets. You can also save frequently used effects over here. There's also the screenshot button which sends a screenshot to your desktop or any other location you can set in the settings. This one's a really cool and easy text animation tool and you can use anything like text delay or any other text animation tool but personally this one works much faster. You just have to click the text layer and hit apply. Then in the add drop down select position for example and let's also add opacity and you all already have a text animation here. You can adjust this text animation to happen based on lines, words or even letters. You can also add other attributes like tracking amount between the letters. So it's basically a really quick and easy way to make some text animation. Overlord is an extension which works on both Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. You can use this to quickly transfer uh, vector layers from into After Effects or Illustrator. This one's really helpful when you just have to select specific vector layers and only transfer them rather than to have go through the process of saving the illustrator file and converting them to shapes and then deleting the ones that you don't need and now we're down to the top three on my list and i've selected these based on how well they work for me and how efficient they make me in my everyday workflow and at number three we have motion tools from motion design school here you can enter custom value to set custom easing, you can snap anchor points with this one. And now I'm just gonna set two keyframes here and add sort of this elastic effect on this keyframe. And you can see that the effect has been applied, you also have an effect for bounds. And you can also clone multiple keyframes across different layers with this one and you can change the sequence of the layers with this one. You can convert illustrator layers into shape layers. You can extract shapes from inside another shape. So as you know, all of these are really handy tools. You can quickly merge multiple shape layers. You have add null option, which parents the selected layer to this null layer. So yeah, it has just enough tools to make it less confusing. It's really efficient to work with and saves a lot of time. K-Bar is this custom toolbar, which I'm just gonna dock right here. It's pretty sleek. You can create buttons to execute script, effects, expressions, etc. And I mainly use it to store all my expressions right here. If you click the edit button right here, you can see that you can give a custom name for the button, you can paste your expressions here, and you can also change the icon of the button. So it's highly customizable. Here I have this button to run a script called True Layer Duplicator, which I showed you earlier. I just have to browse the location of the script, and the button will execute that script. Here I have a loop out expression, and it's fairly quick if I just set the keyframes here and I can just select both the attributes and click on this button for the loop out expression. Also, I have an expression to scale a rectangle from one of its sides without affecting the stroke. So I'm just gonna apply that to the position property here using a button I created for K-Bar. So basically I store all of these expressions inside of K-Bar and I can create a backup so I never lose these expressions as I find them. And at number one we have this extension called Flow. It's my personal favorite because it's for the work that I do it saves me a lot of time. I can quickly apply easing to these keyframes right here. I'm just gonna create the sphere coming in and slowing down in the middle and then easing out. If I just go into the curves graph, you can see how me applying this affected those keyframes and the curves. You can also use any of these custom presets they have for easing. And you can also copy the easing from another set of keyframes 
and for example here I have this circle on the background which I don't want to parent to the layer in front of it but I wanted to copy the same easing so I can just select the two keyframes on the top and just click on this button to copy the easing and now I can paste it over here on these keyframes to have the same easing I'll just quickly switch to the graph editor so you can see the uh, both the keyframes have the same easing. So yeah, that's top 10 list of my favorite scripts and extensions. I hope you liked it. Again, this is solely based on the work that I'm doing lately. So I'll probably update this next year. But if this helped, please do leave a like. And if you want to see more of these videos, please do consider subscribing. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.